Before I now starts to talk, I want you to have a look at this band, please, ladies and gentlemen. I've got something to say. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just teasing. Um, can you hear me? Okay, cool. Um, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Afternoon. Oh, okay. My name is Anam Sondaga. Um, a bit of a background about myself. I'm an electrician by trade. I've produced a company under myself and I'm working full time for Summer Pride Foods as a team leader here in West Bank. My previous employer, Fox Techie Crazy, signed me up for this life changing um, role to find your voice. And I'll be forever grateful for this uh, life opportunity they've given me. I have indeed found myself in this program, and I believe that my team has just started right now. I'm standing before you today to share my experiences and what I actually took away from this course. Um, to get started with that, let me just say that it, it changed my life because uh, the, the course took off right after Corona, the outbreak, and the introduction of the lockdown regulations. I was in a very dark space. Coming out of a very bad 2019, and now watching the introduction of the regulations, putting a, a stop to all the recovery plans that I had for myself, made me very negative, very pessimistic. So um, the course started off very nicely with an emotional intelligence test that we did with Kerry. We did it online as the other um, delegates mentioned. Uh, the feedback was very mind blowing to me. And it was very unfortunate because I was sitting at home, not working at lockdown. I had the time to sit down and actually look <laughs> and reflect. <laughs> when I did uh, the test with Kerry, I could not no, I could not uh, help to notice that um, that test reminded me of a test that I think I wrote about two years back. I was applying for this job. The test is called uh, Personal uh, Profile Assessment. Normally, some companies would give it to you before or after the interviews. Uh, it, it, it evaluates uh, the character traits of people. The company would try to understand what type of person are you? Are you emotionally fit? Are you um, technically fit? Um, are you the right candidate for the job that you actually applied for? Um, as I was mentioned, it was three years ago, but that was the first time I heard about emotional intelligence. The term stuck in my head since then because I did not know how to go about and unpacking this term. I did not know how to actually know myself more as a person and how to actually enhance my people skills. I guess I was very fortunate because two years later, um, I'm in Rotary. When I looked at the cost map, it's, it's perfectly what I was actually longing for this whole time because when I looked at the fluencies that are being dealt with here, um, uh, your diversity fluency, collaboration fluency, solution fluency, and active citizenship fluency, that is very important. I feel like this is actually what we need, as MZ has mentioned earlier on, this is exactly what South Africa needs right now to have um, a course like this to teach people about people skills. I'm not taking anything away from the academic education. This is very important. It's what we need as a nation in South Africa. Moving along, the book that is named, the prescribed book that is named Leaders at Last, it changed my life. It changed my leadership style. It changed my approach. Um, the book uh, spoke about the difference between a manager and a leader. I didn't even know there was, there was a difference. And um, it spoke about the benefits of being a servant leader to your people. Um, the scenarios laid out on the book, the practical stories, they gave me such an insight, the right tools, because I was very fortunate this year, I got a job, a different job, right in the middle of Corona, I think in July. So it was perfect for me because now I just got this new job as a team leader. I have run about 40 people that are under my command. Now I have the book that is giving me the exact skills that I'm going to need to actually win the people over. I know exactly what to do and what not to do. So um, Rotary changed my life. Um, the network, a powerful network from people from different universities, uh, different age, um, different backgrounds. Um, it's, it's, been, it's been great, it's been great. Um, now, the conversations that we had in our sessions, mind blowing, to be able to sit down and listen 
I, I learned more in this course by listening, not by talking. Because when you listen, some, someone is going to talk about something else that you never even thought of. Then what I'm going to do later at home, I'm going to sit down in my laptop, Google, start looking up on these things. That way, I was, I was learning, growing, developing myself. Um, and what, is, what was very important was the, was the presentations from the guest speakers, very powerful, more especially about the, about the, about the NPOs um, and the beautiful stories that were shared by the alumni. They, they moved me, they encouraged me to become more than I am, to get out of the hood, that's what I can say. <laughs> um, what I've picked up along this way, what stood out for me is change. I was very moved by the NPOs, change. I mean, being uh, someone who, who, who grew up in the location in Tanzania, I mean, really, you can see it has problems. So it always stuck with me, how do I go about the change? How do I approach it? Then I got the answer here to say that sometimes I'm an electrician for a trade. I don't have to necessarily have the expertise of the course that I want, but I might know someone in this room who can have a better way. So I learned about, um, building a network, building bridges. Um, as I've said, change, there's two things I'm gonna speak about briefly before I sit down. One, there is change that is out of our hands. We've got uh, global warming, the world is changing. The conversations should change too. Uh, we've got the electrical cars being built. We've got the fourth industrial revolution coming. People are scared thinking about the future uh, job losses and, and all of the people are demotivated, less innovative. How do we change the narrative? How do we come through as leaders to try and motivate them so that they can be more excited and curious about the future? That is the job that we as leaders need to start now thinking about how do we prepare the people that we serve for the future? Are they going to be part of the revolution? And another change that is um, the second one is the one that you can actually control. It can be with our hands, as uh, Lorraine has mentioned, it's those small things. Um, if I can just say just a small story about myself, uh, I was in a bad space. As I've said, I was very negative. When it comes to change, I was very negative. Seeing what is happening around me, I was very negative, very, pes I mean, very pessimistic, complained a lot. Um, and I always thought that change could only come about from um, rich people like your Petrus Motepes and uh, Bill Gates. Up until right along this course, I uh, came through a statement that says, if you think you are too small to make a difference, try sleeping with a mosquito. <laughs> yes, it sounded like a joke to me, but when I thought about it, it's very powerful, it's very profound. That statement changed my life. So far, I have actually... Um, help it uh, to, to charity so far. There's two meanings to this one is the literal one. You can see the small droplets of water, they can fill the bucket. They're gonna start falling down. The second one, if you could say that the small droplets of water were information, life-changing information, then the bucket of water would be my brain. It's not to say that I'm an empty vessel, sorry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so if, if the bucket is my brain, the tiny droplets of water, a conversation like this is going to keep falling in my brain. It's going to overflow. When it overflows, you're going to see now the water um, manifesting all around. Yeah. Education is supposed to make a difference. That water, when it, when it overflows in that bucket, is going to make a difference because you can see it's wet. This conversation that we're having right now should be transferred into actions. And I think that is exactly what is needed right now. I think I can conclude just by saying that uh, I've learned a lot in this program. I have found a voice. I have found myself. I definitely say that this course needs to go more and reach more young people out there so that we can maybe try to counteract with all the negativity, all the greed and the selfishness that is out there in the political space. Uh, that's my conclusion. Thank you. Yeah.